probably the easiest thing to communicate and one of the most fun is Jesus. You see, when we talk about Jesus, we get the opportunity to literally reveal the Son of God. We get to explain what His life was like. We get to make, as the Word says, manifest who He was, why He came, and why we have an assurance that we will live again because Jesus lives in us. Now all those things that I just said, we can't really understand except that we have the Holy Spirit teach us. There's no way for us to really comprehend it except that the Holy Spirit give us the understanding. We mentioned last time that there is this connection that we know of in our physical bodies that has like one kind of like prods that stick out in our brain which is kind of like a massive you know electrode and then we have another bunch of prods that you know kind of like meet each other they just seem to be that close together but not quite touching and then there's a chemical that runs in between that causes that when something comes up this one it jumps across to this one and it does so through the chemical that's in between and so it makes these connections and it kind of goes ch -ch 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 -ch, and that's what we call thought in the physical aspect of the reality of who we are being a body soul and spirit so in our body that's what happens in order to cause us to have intellect to cause us to have intelligence <coughs> excuse me God bless you. Well, thank you. Bless you. No, <laughs> kidding. Bless you. Bless you. No, bless you. No, bless you. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, bless you too. <laughs> but to cause us to have these thoughts are by way of those physical connections. Now, if you think that you're only a physical body, then you leave it at that. You're just some electrical impulse that's going <laughs> between two prods that are chemically separated, and that's what's causing you to think. If that's all you think you are, okay. But for me, I have a soul. I have an emotion. I have feelings. I have sensitivities that somehow, I don't think that just some electrical impulse, no matter how complicated or not complicated the brain really is or isn't, that explains everything about my soul. Now, I also know by way of my experience as well as the fact that the Bible says so that I have a spirit and that the spirit of God resides in me and that's why I have a spirit because it is his spirit that lives in me and that I am a body soul and spirit created in the image of God which is father son and spirit so just like there's a tripartite of the Godhead or a triune being that the Godhead represents, which is God himself, which is one, so too I am one, but I am three parts, body, soul, and spirit. And each one is slightly different in aspects of different realities that work in different ways, but they're similar. So my soul likewise has connections, and somehow it connects, and there's something in between that connects them, and then the same thing that's in the spirit, and there's something that connects them. Which is interesting because when you start looking at peace, love, and joy, you begin to realize that when Jesus said the light of the body is the eye and how great is the light within, you begin to see something different. You know as well as I do that when you talk about the soul and you begin to listen to music, you feel something by way of what you hear. Funny how that works. Maybe hearing has something to do with the soul as well as seeing has something to do with the spirit. Interesting, isn't it, that there's more to the body than meets the eye, more than the being we are than we understand or comprehend more than what we've heard or ever been taught before. So in so saying, when we read about the Holy Spirit, we begin to understand God made us unique. God made us special. God made us likened a lot like Himself because He had an image to make us by. Because He wanted us to discover who He is, what He is, how He operates, how he wants to have and how he does have a relationship with us if we are born again.
for a being, which is the Holy Spirit as we've been discussing him as being a person, because it's obvious that the Holy Spirit is a person, because there is no other explanation with which we would be able to determine who he is. But we are discussing that because there are people that argue about whether the person of the Holy Spirit is actually real, or whether there's more to him that we don't understand. Like I say, I say, yes, of course he's real, of course he's a person, but he's also more than I understand. And so I'm able to accept him as a person with a lot more knowledge than I got, because he's been around a lot longer than I am. And frankly, when he breathed his life into me and I became a living soul, when he breathed his life and came inside me and I became filled with the Holy Spirit, I realized oh, there's more to him than I understand or comprehend. And so we've been discussing that in The Living Water with Chuck Smith, but discussing that in the study of the Holy Spirit, in the person as we've been doing the personality of the Holy Spirit right now. Intelligence will and emotion of the Holy Spirit. For a being to be considered a person, he or she must possess certain characteristics by way of human definition. First among these is intelligence, the second is will, and the third is emotion. All three are required if personality is to exist. Human beings possess all three and therefore can truly be considered persons, but rocks, bicycles, flowers, oak trees, even computers all lack personality, no matter how much you think your iPod has personality. They may be useful and pleasant and highly desirable, but none of them can be considered persons. They do not have intelligence, will, and emotion. Three different aspects. You know, when we consider what the Bible says of the Holy Spirit, it becomes very clear very quickly that he is indeed a person possessing intelligence, will, and emotion. Let's consider each of these attributes one at a time. Number one, intelligence. In 1 Corinthians 2, 10, and 11, the Apostle Paul writes of the Spirit's intimate knowledge of the deep things of God. Inarguably a description of intelligence since he is the one that has intimate knowledge of the deep things of God. He writes, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Interesting. Interesting. All the way through this passage, divine intelligence is ascribed or described of the Holy Spirit and ascribed to the Spirit of God. Paul insists that the Holy Spirit knows the things of God. Only a person with intelligence can know something. And not only does he know these deep things, Paul says the Spirit also teaches us, helping us, to compare spiritual things with spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2.13 Don't miss what Paul says about the Holy Spirit here. First, God reveals things to us by the Spirit. God reveals things to us by the Spirit, not direct, but by His Spirit. Second, the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God searches. The deep things of God that man does not know, the Spirit does know. No man knoweth the day or the hour? Ask the Spirit. <laughs> Maybe he knows. <laughs> Third, the Spirit of God teaches us of the things that God freely gives us by helping us to compare one spiritual thing with another. All of these activities manifestly requires intelligence, one of the key components of the personality. The Bible insists that the Holy Spirit possesses intelligence. You know, I can't say to you much more than what the Bible has just frankly said, what the scriptures has obviously revealed, and that is that the Holy Spirit has intelligence. How would you get a word of knowledge if you could not understand the word and that he's the one giving it? So a lot of times I think people take for granted and take to abuse those things of the Spirit that they want to use without 
dealing with the person of the Holy Spirit. We need to be careful about that because if the Holy Spirit has intelligence, then we need to recognize that intelligence for he has more than what we do. He is smarter than we are. He is more intelligent than what we claim to possess. I think that there's too little thinking going on when it comes to mankind and that there's a lot more waiting, stillness, and years of patient thought process of the Spirit of God that operates that we need to back off our quick conclusions of being a hasty people and begin to come to long, long, thought out processes. The reason being is that there's a hint of a day being as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day which can also mean that there is an eternal now existing in the dimension that we're going into that God operates in a way that doesn't deal with time the same way we do he deals with it in a long existing presence everything happens now and that it's probable that when we would think we understand something that we comprehend something and we go on with something, we really have made an assumption and haven't thought it all the way through. We need to take that time to consider well what it is we're doing, what the consequences are, what the reality of the situation is involving everything that is involved in what we're about, and then have as it were, a conclusion based upon thinking about what we're doing, what we're saying, what we're hearing, what we're speaking, and how we are. Before this modern generation, people took time, lots of time, to think about what they're doing. The probability, and I will present to you the in my opinion, obviousness of the Spirit of God working in us is that we need to slow down and stop and be still in order to hear the Spirit speak. Because I think the Holy Spirit knows how slow God operates. Not slow in the sense of His slowness, but slow in the sense of how hasty we are and we don't walk in his will because we run our own race father I thank you that you've given us your spirit I thank you that as brief as we look at but as long as it takes I am glad that the Holy Spirit is here to make us take the time to consider to be whole to hear and to see what it is that the Spirit of God would reveal to us. For if we do not take the time, we will not make the time to be still and know God. If we do not slow down, we cannot be found walking with God when we're running far ahead. Lord God Almighty, change us and rearrange us to your timing and your will. Give us your intelligence that the Holy Spirit has led us to, to consider well what he is teaching us as far as being a person of great intellect and thought, so that we would be like him and not move ahead of him, but listen to what he has to say to us as we compare these things, spiritual to spiritual, and we lift and stand before you, our hearts our wills and even our hastiness so that we would not be a people rushing about with our heads cut off like chickens that are just dying and just don't realize it yet until the last amount of blood is pumped out of their bodies and they collapse but God rather we would be men and women of God standing still to see what it is that our God will do 
will say and we will hear as you give us ears to hear. Thank you, Father, for your Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. Give us that ability to slow down, to be found still before you. Amen. May it be the Lord God Almighty, somehow, as I know it's not part of your nature, slow you down, help you to be found in His Word, in His will, and in His way. Not running ahead of the game, but walking daily, step by step with Jesus.